everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm with eLearning Brothers. Today we're going to be talking about how to astound your learners with these creative video strategies. This session will be recorded and we'll get a copy of it sent out to everybody who has registered for this session uh, later today. So you can be looking forward to that in your uh, email inbox. If you have questions during the webinar, we'll be ready to answer your questions using that questions panel. It looks like a couple of you have already found that. Uh, so please do keep using that and uh, participate throughout the session. We'd love to hear what you have to say. All right, so to, to talk to us about creative video strategies, we have Andre Chatlin, Director of Custom Production with us today. Thanks for sharing your time and your thoughts with us, Andre. I'll go ahead and uh, turn the time over to you without further ado. Thanks, Andrew. So the purpose of this webinar is to be able to share some excitement that I have with uh, video. I've been playing with video for about 20 years now. Um, my favorite tools are Adobe Premiere, After Effects, Camtasia, and Beyond. And the goal is to give you some ideas on how you can use video a little bit differently to help put some life into your e-learning. So to start off, we're going to share one of my favorite videos that I watch all the time. Um, and what I'd like you to do is you're watching the video, we're just going to watch maybe uh, 30 seconds worth. Go ahead and put in a comment of what you think this video has going for it. So Andrew, can you play the video? Yep, here we go. Hello, and welcome to Mac Academy. My name is Randy Smith, and over the next couple of hours, we'll be discussing Microsoft Word. We'll be going over the basics of that program. I'd like to welcome each of you to this tape and also to the Mac Academy organization. I'd like to spend, before we dig right into the program, I'd like to spend a few minutes and talk about some of the differences between word processing on the Macintosh computer, word processing perhaps that you're used to on IBMs and IBM compatibles or some of the earlier programs for the Macintosh. You know, today a lot of people talk about word processing and they also talk a lot about desktop publishing. One of the first things that you need to realize is that there is a major difference between word processing and desktop publishing. I know you'll go down to your local Apple dealer or one of your software stores and they'll try and convince you that all you need to buy is one program. For example, if you buy PageMaker, you don't need to buy a word processing program. Or if you buy the all new Word 4.0, then uh, you won't need to go buy a desktop publishing program because it does everything. A lot of people don't understand the difference between the two types of programs. and So I'd like to talk about that just for a moment, and I'd also like to talk. Okay, so uh, Andrew, can you read off some of the comments that people gave for me, please? Yeah, absolutely. So people, it, it seems like people want to be really positive about this at first. <laughs> so uh, A, cool music, awesome music, great soundtrack, retro 80s stuff, probably because this genuinely was published in the 80s. Funky music, um, very boring, says another person. Good use of multi-camera angles, yeah. Um, All right, that's good. So yeah, lots of, lots of thoughts like that. So one of the things that I thought was interesting about this is I was watching it. This guy goes on for about 20 minutes before you actually get into the tool and get to see a computer screen. And then when you see the computer screen, it's just, it's beautiful. Um, so a lot going for this video, uh, but with any tool that you're going to use to present any teaching method, there's an effective way and a less effective way to use it. Um, and so what we want to do is explore some of the, the awesome ways that you can there use. There are a couple more thoughts oh. pointing out here that um, now that you're showing the actual YouTube link, they're seeing that it's two hours long. That is ridiculously yes. long. Another person says... <laughs> Uh, there's no way I could stay uh, interested in this for a couple of hours. I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's crazy. They do they have do. video in video, so it, it draws your attention in. Um, but yes, we're, we're going to look at different aspects of how to use video effectively in e-learning. So we can make things a little bit better, um, a little less of a babysitter and more of an interactive opportunity. Um, I know that the video doesn't play really well while we're doing a webinar, and so I'm going to have Andrew share a link. This is a, a video that um, we put together for teenage drivers, teaching them how to drive um, and not be distracted, not to multitask. So I've sent that out in the chat. You can uh, see that right in the GoToWebinar chat and click right on the link. Perfect. 
So I'm going to go ahead and show it on my screen uh, so that you can see kind of what's going on. Um, one of the most important things is to identify the purpose and the objective of your video. So as I mentioned before, this is for teenagers. Uh, as we put this video together, it's a screen recording of a, a simulation. Uh, we put in a, a cell phone. Yes, we're still back in the 80s, it looks like. Um, but they're supposed to go through and they're supposed to click on the different hazards in the video as they're going along the road. Uh, they should be ignoring the, the cell phone or by habit they might be clicking on different things and answering. Um, as we finished creating this activity, we realized that we were teaching teenagers uh, to do well at multitasking uh, because they're able to click on things and be able to answer the cell phone. And so we had to relook at it and figure out how can we do this so that they don't get credit for clicking on the cell phone and answering text messages. So we realized if we gave them a results screen afterwards um, and gave them credit for all the hazards that they clicked on, uh, but then help them to realize they don't get any credit for multitasking and then give them the information about what multitasking does to their driving and their performance starts to drop. So this is a fun way, an interactive way that you can um, use video uh, you record things on your screen. Maybe you're using video games and those types of things to take advantage of some of the simulations and animations that are available out there. And then make it interactive, put different targets on top of the screen that they can click on. Um, next thing that we're going to look at is make sure that you consider your audience. So in this video, um, we had uh, teenagers that actually went out in their high school and they recorded their own videos. So they went and they asked different teenagers what they think a good driver means. Uh, and so you get some hilarious feedback from teenagers that think they're really cool. Um, some people that say you're a good driver as long as you don't run into anything. Um, but you can see the quality of the video isn't the greatest but the audience didn't expect that. They, teenagers shoot video all day, every day, um, and they know that it's shooting from the phone. Sometimes it's vertical, sometimes it's horizontal, um, but they accept the quality being low because of that. Also with this audience, it was gonna be presented in a classroom with 30 students all logging in on the same internet line. And so we knew that the stream wasn't gonna be great, the bandwidth was gonna be low. And so we had to reduce the quality a little bit and we had to put it on a streaming server so that the learners could access it all at the same time without having to, to buffer. So consider your audience. How are they going to access the video? Um, is it going to be on their phone? Is it going to be on a computer screen or a tablet? Uh, take into consideration the minimum standards and then be able to put your video together based on who the audience is and when they're going to access it. So consider your audience. Next, um, storyboarding. This is pretty important. Uh, some people storyboard, others don't. Some just jump right into the video. Uh, but I'm curious to hear what are the different types of storyboarding that you do. So we're going to do a poll, Andrew, if you can put that up. And if you go ahead and respond, what type of storyboarding that you do, if you do it or you don't. Um, hopefully the other field allows you to type things in, maybe not but you can put that in the comment if it doesn't allow you to type it in. Yep, so you guys can click right on the screen, and if you do select other, please do send a, a response to the questions panel. So do you use Microsoft Word, a two-column audio and thumbnail kind of uh, layout for storyboarding? Do you use a sketchbook, dry erase, PowerPoint mock-ups, uh, or none? You don't storyboard. And of course, other. We'd love to hear your other ideas. Um, some of those other ideas that are coming through uh, using Google Docs, Visio, uh, sketchbook and PowerPoint, so you know multiple multiple of the ones that are up on the screen. Uh, OneNote for collaborating, Google Slides for collaborating. Good. Um, let's look at the other results here. So it looks like 36% of our audience uses PowerPoint mockups. 32% use Microsoft Word or a two-column audio and thumbnail setup. 18% don't storyboard. 10% use a sketchbook or dry erase. You know, oh, I spelled that wrong. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being so understanding, everybody. And then 4% were there in those questions panel. Good. So that comes back about what I expected. Uh, the most common that I've seen as I've used it and as I've worked with, with different clients has been the Microsoft Word two column. But you've got a little bit of thumbnail on the left side and then the narration on the right side. 
Uh, the format that I like the best is one that's done here. Um, do I need to share my screen again? Let me switch back. Nope. Okay. So this is one that uh, Brigham did. He works uh, for us doing some contract work, consulting often. Um, but one thing that's wonderful, if you have somebody that's an artist, somebody that can sketch things out, it's great if they can just put it up on a dry erase board, take a, a picture of it, um, and then just put it in a slideshow. And then it, you can either do a, sh a screen share with your clients or you can record it like uh, Brigham did here. But basically you're just walking them through the different ideas that you have. And the reason that I think this works best is because different from a PowerPoint or a two column, uh, it's easier to describe with your hands and with your emotion, with your voice, what's happening on the screen. You can add in sound effects. You can talk about the car that's driving in and what it looks like when it stops. Uh, and kind of stutters. But this is the best way for the presentation of a storyboard because the client can then respond in real time as you're going through. You can sketch things on the screen. That's another reason that I like doing the, the Google Slides as when you're collaborating, you can draw things right on the screen in real time and your client can see it. They can make their own little comments. Um, so the story become, storyboard becomes live. Uh, you get to engage with it. So that's what the storyboard looked like. Um, you can see it's it's really rough. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of color to it. Uh, there are some graphics that were pulled from the internet, uh, just thrown in there so that the client would have an idea of how it looked. Um, but I wanna show you a little clip of what the actual video looks like so that you can see how it came to life. Uh, Andrew, can you show that? We are Ally Auto, and this is Little Red. This is the story about how Ally Auto helps power Little Red through her life cycle with products and services that follow the traditional automotive business model. Little Red's journey begins with her birth at Go Auto Manufacturing. Go is an OEM, or Original Equipment Manufacturer. They're the ones who manufacture Little Red and want to distribute her to franchises known as dealerships across the country. Enter Ally Auto Finance and our Alliance sales team. We offer manufacturers the opportunity to select and customize a variety of Ally programs to help move vehicles to dealerships and to the end consumer. In addition to auto dealerships, Ally also maintains relationships with other diverse clients. Now, Little Red is ready to start her journey to her new home. But wait, is the dealership ready for her? This is Pink Flamingo Motors, a new dealership needing to purchase real estate and acquire working capital the dollars needed to keep the business running smoothly. So this was a fun video for us to put together. Um, some of you might recognize the tool as Beyond that we used. It's a quick uh, tool that's really cheap um, comparatively. I think you spend about 60 bucks a month for it. But it was a fun way for us to quickly put together a story, to put together some characters that were animated. Um, and it came to life really well. The client didn't have a lot of edits or changes after we went from the screen share type of storyboard to the actual video itself. So this was a fun way for us uh, to be able to win some awards and make a, a great quality video because we used we took advantage of storyboarding it out. Okay, the next thing that we want to focus on is creating a story. Making it story-centered is pretty important because it, it's what draws in the viewer. It allows them to, to be able to see memorable characters. It allows them to um, be able to relate to a plot that is existing. So with this video that was put together, uh, the client came and asked for some type of way to present some training on fishing. And most of us have probably have gone through that training, compliance training, security training. That's really boring. Um, but uh, Brigham, he was sitting at home with his kids watching SpongeBob. And the idea came to him that, hey, SpongeBob, fish, hey, we could put this together. He pitched the idea to the client and he didn't just say, how about we do this cheesy cartoon that looks like SpongeBob and 
make it great. Um, but instead, he did some of the storyboarding. So he showed them some ideas that he had of what the characters might look like. And then he helped them to see a story behind it. So we're going to watch just a short uh, portion of this. And as you're watching, I want you to com comment in the comment section um, how the story helps. How does it draw you into the content itself? Tonight on Sea Predators at Large, let's talk about fishing. Fishing has evolved exponentially since the days of Nigerian royalty scams. And despite best efforts, most companies are not equipped to deal with the challenge that has grown increasingly targeted, sophisticated, and lethal. Unknowing employees are accidentally clicking on phishing links and taking the bait by engaging with fake emails all the time. When they do, businesses are leaving their networks wide open to devastating data and financial loss. Email remains the most durable and effective form of communication for organizations in the digital era. A single focused phishing attack can cripple an organization overnight and signs of fraud are harder to detect than ever. Phishing bypasses IT security measures because employees unknowingly let them in. U.S. businesses have lost over $12 billion due to phishing attacks. 95% of cyber attacks on businesses are the result of spear phishing attacks. And 30% of phishing emails are opened by company employees. There's a good chance your organization is getting fished right now. Okay, can you share with us some of the comments, Andrew? Yeah, here's a couple of them. Um, one, this is hilarious. That is one comment. Another one, uh, the view is from the perspective uh, of the viewer. I love the old school feel in music. Whatever is being, uh, let's see, it, uh, wow, more are coming in. It keeps moving the, the section. Draws my interest. It's easier to understand and remember. Uh, there's lots of close-ups of the character expressions. Uh, love continuous movement, uh, super engaging animation. Sound effects are great, very, very cute. Uh, love the look, fun music. Someone says, why did you stop? I need to know what happens. Uh, that's a good thought. Um, great voice talent is another good one. Um, very cool way to get the point across. So lots of, lots of, oh, and play on words. I like the play on words. That's another comment here. Good. Yep. So the most important part of the story, if you're going to use it for a teaching point, is to make sure that you've got a challenge or a problem that needs to be addressed. Um, make sure that the learner is watching for a purpose. It isn't just for entertainment factor, even though we got some groovy music going in the background and the characters are cute. Uh, it needs to have a purpose, it needs to have a moral to the story. And yes, this will be to be continued. So we'll share a link out there and you can finish the story. But that's that's the importance of being story centered. Um, it's very difficult to sell this with clients unless you pitch it that way. Give them an idea of what it's going to look like. Help them to understand how the story is going to drive the message that they have. Um, it, we usually have about maybe a 50% acceptance rates from our clients. It's really hard to sell them on this type of thing because they think it might be too cheesy or the, the humor might not be accepted by the general population. But the audience is key. Um, that's one of the first things we have you look at before you, you ever do a video. Um, if they are a group that won't receive this well, then no matter how cute your idea is, it's, it's not going to give that message that you want to. Okay, thanks for your comments on that. Well, let's jump to the next one. Video can be used to set the mood and the context. So what's great about video is it's becoming more and more um, accessible. So it is not expensive, um, and you can use it uh, in off-the-shelf uh, situations really easy. So this is a client, uh, Signakai. Uh, we, we put together a frat house here that's in disarray, and the learner, this is kind of their menu. They have to jump from room to room and hopefully put things back together so that they can feel proud about uh, their, frater their fraternity. So in order to put it back together, they've got to click on each of these challenges. Um, and the, the scenarios that they're going through are pretty basic. I mean, they're not anything that's um, really that challenging or difficult, but we want to put them in that scene so that their emotions are tied to it. 
And so each little scenario starts off with a little video vignette. Um, the narrator is actually talking over the video and describing what the scenario is. So in this scenario, these two guys are getting together and one of the brothers is drinking a little bit too much. And then they have to answer the question, okay, what are you gonna do? Nick and DeMarco showed up your, your Derby Days karaoke event with alcohol and they're not supposed to have it. Um, it allows them to interact with another brother, ask questions, review the policy, and then they get to make their selection. Um, if they get it wrong, then they're going to get some feedback. And you, again, you just show a little video vignette. These aren't actual characters that we hired. This is off-the-shelf video from our eLearning Brothers library. Um, it puts them in that moment. Uh, they feel the emotions of interacting with a, a friend or a buddy that's kind of complaining or saying, um, why can't I have alcohol? Why are you being a stick in the mud? So now they have to uh, respond uh, to their friend in a, in a real way. So this is something that can be done really easy. You just use little bite-sized videos. Um, we're not gonna do two hours worth of Microsoft Word 3.0. Uh, with a talking head, uh, we'll give them a little bit of flavor, put things in context, give them some emotion right off. Okay, so let's jump back. Next one is showing off your skills. So this is important. A lot of the times video is just show and we don't allow the learner to interact with it. And we lose a lot uh, by doing that. Uh, it is important to have somebody that's an expert that's going to show off their skills. That is important. But if you do that for too long, you're going to lose your learner, no matter how interesting the content is that you're showing. So in this video, uh, the narrator is taking the learner through it. This is a teenager that's learning what to expect when they do the driver's portion of the driver's ed test. Uh, and so he takes them through, he shows them, okay, you're going to have to make left turns, you're going to have to turn your head to the left and to the right, and the left again, um, and what does that look like? So the video is going to stop and allow them to interact with it. So which of these videos or which of these uh, screenshots is the driver going to get credit for looking to the left and to the right? Now I've got a 15-year-old that is driving right now. And she's always doing what this girl does right here. Her eyes are moving left and right, but her head doesn't. And so by allowing them to interact with it, uh, you can give them feedback and help them to realize, yeah, these two folks, they're looking with their eyes, but they're not going to get credit for that. Um, and so they, uh, they'll be able to see and interact with the video a little bit. Uh, it also will take them to the next step. So it, it builds on what the content is a layer by layer, and it isn't overwhelming them with too much information all at once. So will you go ahead and share that link in the comment section? So this is a, a lesson that you can play around with in the comment section. Uh, you can click on the link and um, play with it a little bit to see how the interactive video is being used. Okay, next, um, I've got two videos that I'm gonna have Andrew play for you. And I want you to see if you can tell the difference between these videos. Uh, go ahead and enter that into the comments. Um, not only pay attention to the uh, what was put in the video that makes it a little bit different, but then pay attention to how it makes you feel, how it makes you, um, how, how your interest level is in the video as you're watching the two. The instinct to rely on a gut feeling for decisions, limitations in the data, complex analysis, identifying the right insights, and driving action can be tough. But as you consider this, think about the impact your successful project will have for your colleagues across United Health Group and for you personally. The instinct to rely on a gut feeling for decisions, limitations in the data, complex analysis, identifying the right insights, and driving action can be tough, but as you consider this, think about the impact your successful project will have for your colleagues across United Health Group and for you personally. The the first iteration was kind of dull. The narrator needed more emotion in his voice, not very animated in his tone. Hey, come on, that was money. <laughs> How rude. The next one is uh, she did awesome. Oh, there's good highs and lows and pauses. There's sound effects. It's much more believable. It's clear that you're invested in the information provided. Um, good music in addition as well. 
Uh, let's see. The first one's a hollow voice with white noise in the background. The second one is clear audio, and the music helped set the tone for the video. It was much crisper um, and more emotional. So people are saying that the second one was more emotional. Definitely. Yeah, it makes a world of a difference if you're going to use a professional narrator. Um, there are so many out there right now. Uh, we don't pay more than $15 a finished minute for audio. A lot of our voice talent uh, we do have in-house, but it's got to be somebody that has a lot more emotion to their voice than I do, apparently. <laughs> uh, audio makes a huge difference with immersion. It puts them in the situation with just a little bit of sound effects. Again, you can find a ton of sound effects online for free, or eLearning Brothers has great ones uh, that you can get from our library. Um, but it, it adds emotion to what you're watching, and it allows the learner to invest a little bit more because they're they're engaged with it. So good comments. That's exactly right. All right, what about the quality of the videos? We've got a ton of clients that come to us and just say, hey, we've got the content, we've got a video, we've got some e-learning. Can you just freshen it up, make it a little bit better? Um, and it's a challenge. It's tough to make content that appears to be really boring. Um, to have life, to breathe life into it. Uh, but it, it's something that you can do by adding a little bit of motion to it, add some graphics, find an, an actor or somebody that's got some humor. Um, let's go ahead and uh, take a little um, view at one of these videos that our client asked us. It's gonna be choppy because I'm showing it from my screen. Um, but this is the kind of stuff that we liked in the 70s. We re related with these characters. This gal was probably Mr. Rogers' wife, maybe. But for some reason, this is what worked. This is what uh, the audience loved. Uh, they, slow, they sold a lot of learning based off of this video. And you can see it's, it's a couple minutes long, each one. Um, and so they asked us to refresh it, to bring some life to it. And this is what we came up with. So again, we considered the audience. Um, we considered what age they were, what kind of things they look at when they're online. Uh, we added some graphics to it, some color. You can see we changed the angle of the video so that it's moving, not only zooming in, zooming out, but you can see it going around. There is audio and sound effects to it, but you don't see that. Um, and also the character that we chose, this, this actress, she's got a lot of humor uh, that, she, that she sprinkles in. So we didn't have to do a lot of retakes. We just kept a lot of the funny things that she ad-libbed in there. And the audience loved it. This was something that <laughs> turned out really well. Um, and so the clients was really happy with it. So quality really does make a difference. Um, you don't have to shoot high-end video and um, with all the lights and multiple cameras and such. We're not talking about Hollywood type of quality, but we're talking about quality that you spend time, you invest in, you put in some graphics, you put in some text, uh, you bring life to it. There is a note here that that first one that you showed mm -hmm. is is retro now, and so you could probably use that's it again. True. It comes down to knowing your audience. <laughs> if your audience would be interested yeah. in that kind of retro, you could probably use that style again. Yeah, um, we're just like Disney too. Every 30 years, we're going to remake all these videos. I'm sure this will be retro pretty soon. <laughs> Thanks for your comment. All right, now we're to my favorite one. Um, again, interactive video is really important to me because. Having a passive learner uh, isn't going to help them to change their behavior. It's gonna, not going to help them to learn the skills that they need. So as instructional designers and developers, our ultimate mission is really to help them to transfer the skills from the learning environment to the real environment. So this is a video, interactive video, called Lifesaver. Um, and we can share the link, Andrew, if you'll put that in the comments so that you guys can play it. Um, what's really cool about this, I know it's going to be stuttered a little bit as you watch it. Um, they did a good job with the sound effects. They did a good job with the motion of the, the camera. Um, you can, you'll be able to recognize some of the actors maybe in this video. But it's, it's teaching life-saving skills. It's targeted to an audience of uh, later teenagers, early 20 age group, but people that are interested in CPR, learning how to um, help save lives. So you can see down here at the bottom, they've got a timer, they give you feedback, they try to drive the adrenaline, you have to answer right away. If you get it wrong, they'll give you a chance to answer it again. 
they're keeping track of your score up top. Um, they've got a lot of different things that are happening constantly and moving quick. Uh, the, they put questions in. Um, they've got branching that's going on. I apparently clicked on the one that branched us uh, towards the bad ending. Uh, this poor guy died. I clicked on the wrong answer. <laughs> uh, but later on in the vid video, they have you practice CPR and they actually have you use the keyboard. You have to hit the A and the L buttons at the same time and you have to do it in the right timing. Um, so it's, it's really interactive um, and it gets you involved emotionally. So I'm going to switch. So Try out that link. They have it so that you can earn a certificate, which is really cool. I had my kids do it. Uh, they've got a lot of different uh, groups you get to interact with. A guy that you're helping with the Heimlich, Heimlich maneuver. Um, it's uh, Canadian or European. So, so Andre, they, it looks like I'm missing that link in my list, but we'll oh. get a e we'll email it out with the recording to everybody so you guys can see that one. Yep, it's also on the screen right now. So if you wanted to type it in. Um, yep, we'll get that out to you. It's it's really well done, um, and I think this is the best way to use video. It gives you a little bit of video. You have to interact with it. You get feedback based on your response, so it isn't just canned uh, type of things. It isn't just multiple choice, um, but it gets you into the training itself. So there's a few other things I want to throw out there. It looks like we've got a little bit more time. Um, but some, some fun ideas, some different ways that you can use video uh, to help your learners out. One that we take advantage of whenever we do uh, an e-learning course with a company that's interesting and it's been fun for us, we create a little video uh, screen recording that we call a showcase video. We give this to our client at the end of our uh, development session after it's been approved, and they use it as a commercial to get their learners excited. So before they send them to their LMS and say, hey, you've got some compliance training you need to do, instead they uh, email out this little video link and say, hey, we've got this great uh, training that we've put together. We've invested a lot of money and time in this, and it's really important that you grasp and then you list the objectives. Um, and we feel that this is the best way to present it. It helps um, with buy-in on the learners so that they feel like this isn't just something that they're wasting their time looking at. Okay, another way that you can use video uh, effectively is if you have a low budget um, e-learning project, you can take advantage of a lot of the templates that exist out there, uh, whether it's with Camtasia or After Effects or Premiere. Um, but you can tie in a whole bunch of the templates and put video on top of video really quick and easy. You can dissolve in the logo to make it look like it's yours or your clients, but it's a great way to start off each of your uh, modules or each of your chapters. Um, just put in some narration over the top of it to introduce what the objectives are. Uh, this this client had us put together, I think it was 65 hours of training. It was really static. It wasn't really exciting. Um, it was mostly presentational. But because each chapter was presented with an interact, not interactive, but an engaging and immersive video, um, it, it helped the learner get excited about what they were going to go through. Okay, another one that's uh, popular right now is 3D video. Uh, be able to use your um, your Google Cardboard um, or just to do it uh, using YouTube. So 3D video is pretty fun. Um, but as I've started playing with it and tried to find application for using it, I realized that it is very easy to get lost. You can't hear the narration, but the instructor is taking you through and he's talking to you about mer Mercury. Um, and it's taken me quite a while to figure out where Mercury is and try to get myself there. It kind of makes you a little bit sick. Uh, you can put in things that you can click on, more information. It's intriguing and it's, it's engaging, um, but it's difficult to keep your learners on task and uh, take them from slide to slide as you would with your traditional e-learning. Um, another fun video, that uh, interactive video that's out there, it's... It seems to be mostly the marketing teams that are using things like this. Uh, Nike did this one that's kind of fun, um, learning to play nice. <laughs> so the audio is just kind of 
you got the guy coming out of the door, he's interacting with his neighbor, um, but then you have to make a decision here. What type of video experience do you want to have? Do you, are you gonna play nice or are you gonna play less nice? And you click on it and you see this guy's running down the street, not being very nice. <laughs> and so it's a, a, way, a fun way to branch your video. Um, it's really easy to do. We use Storyline for most of our e-learning. And because most people have fast internet connections, you can put one section of your video on one slide and then the next on the next slide and just branch it from slide to slide and make it look like it's all one video. It's a great way to make the learner feel like they're the ones choosing their own adventure as they go through it. Uh, another one that's kind of like that uh, is this group that they've got some fun technology out there where you can do layered video on top of video on top of video on top of video but uh, they did the making of the jungle book let's see if i can get to it and it allows you to slide the video um, it has a slider in the middle where you can jump from the actual video the finished quality to the making of the video and it's just it's a lot of fun it helps you to realize what goes into creating videos um, but there's a lot of technology out there. Uh, VR is really popular right now. AR, um, those are a lot of technologies that we're still trying to feel feel it out and find out what's the best application uh, for using the technology. It's becoming more and more, or less and less expensive and more and more available with the different tools that are, are there. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, I'd love to hear any feedback that you have, any questions that you're interested in. Um, the presentation isn't really about how to design and build the video itself. It's more about how can you use video in different ways, in less expensive ways, um, but still make it so that your e-learning is now more immersive, more interactive, and it helps the learners to transfer what they're doing um, into the real world. So I'll turn it over to you if you have any questions. Uh, if not, thanks for joining, and we'll let Andrew. Yeah, we've got a couple questions here. Um, from all over your presentation, actually. Some uh, some people going back a little bit further with uh, questions. Of course, the, the common question that we get in every single webinar where we showcase anything, what tools were used for some of these presentations? In particular, the driving uh, simulation ones, how were those made? Gotcha. So we used an actual driving simulator and we just did screen recordings of it. So we've used it with uh, arcade games, with Xbox games and those types of things. You just have somebody that's actually driving the vehicle or driving the narrated character across the screen and you record it. Now it becomes a, a static video and you put that into whatever tool you're using for e-learning and you put targets on it, invisible targets, and you allow the learner to click on things as the video is going along. The challenging part to it is if you've got video like the driving ones where you've got a lot of the background that's moving, your targets have to move and track with whatever uh, they're supposed to be clicking on. So it becomes a little bit of a challenge. With those, we had to use a streaming server because it was so fast paced, a lot of things happening on the screen all at once. But nowadays, uh, more and more people have fast internet connections, so that makes it available to anybody. Um, in reference to the choose your own adventure style uh, courses and videos, how do you provide, if if at all, a accessible version of those? That's a challenge for us. Um, it is something that you kind of have to water it down. Um, sometimes we provide PDF versions of it. Sometimes we just put in the closed captioning uh, to make it available. Um, but it, it is a challenge. Uh, we, we have to work with our clients to find out, okay, what are the restrictions that you have with this type of interactivity? What type of experience uh, do those that can't access it in this way, uh, what way can they learn the same information or have a similar experience in maybe a static way? So it is a challenge and it's something that you have to take case by case. Now, here's something that has been brought up in past webinars quite a, quite a bit, and Misty has addressed it, um, Laura has addressed it, we've had a lot of uh, great presenters addressing the issue of that phishing scam video was hilarious, it was great, it was very fun. But how do you try to put something fun into a very corporate uh, you know, atmosphere? How, how do you get past the restrictions of needing to appear professional or, or you know perfect or spot on or whatever and is that more than just a discussion with with uh, the the stakeholders or, or how to how do you work through that 
Yeah, it's really a matter of your sales skills, <laughs> power of persuasion. As I mentioned before, one of the things that helped with this one is that uh, Brigham put together some sketches. He just drew on a dry erase, took some pictures of it, and he helped the, the client see the value um, of using this story uh, would have. And it helped him get past the uh, comical, uh, cartoonish um, gimmick uh, type of mentality that seems to come up whenever you're talking about compliance or safety training. So. Those are some of the strategies, help them get a vision of it and the value that the learner will have by being immersed into the training versus sitting back and just having to sit through a boring training that looks professional, but they're not engaged and they're not invested in it. Great, thank you so much, Andre. Those are all the, the questions that we have right now. There's a lot, I mean, uh, there's of course questions about uh, trying to get the links or access to some of these courses and we'll, we'll put together what we can and get those sent out to you uh, in either the email later today or um, we'll find some other way to get that information to you if not in the email. Um, I do want to mention though if you'd like to continue to chat about using video, um, maybe you just want some consultation on how to better use a video, maybe some of the legalities that you need to consider when building video or uh, if you're looking for somebody to, to bounce ideas off with your own video, give us, a, give us an email. Uh, you can reach out to Scott Condi at scondi at elearningbrothers.com and he can schedule that uh, that jam session with you, if you will. Um, also, if you would like to see more of what our custom team has done at elearningbrothers.com, there's a custom solutions section and there's a couple demos in there and you can also schedule to just see a demo of the work that we've done. You can go there and, and check those out. Thank you so much, Andre. This has been very, very fun, very useful for everybody. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and we hope we see you next time.